Hey guys, Kobani here with another tutorial. And this time to be on Substance Designer. I'll be working on creating this stone texture on the wall up here. This is the level I'm creating in Unreal Designer. I mean, <laughs> Unreal Engine 4. And uh, I just wanted to create this texture manu manually and see what I can get out of it. And uh, yep, so let's start. I'll be calling this uh, material stone wall. Ch name might change in the future. When I come up with something better, and uh, I created this base, you can start with you can create your new substance and start with the uh, um, PBR base metallic roughness and add this right here. By I, I added this tab by pressing space bar and then typing in PBR, and I chose base material, it adds this right here, and it just connects everything. To it. and to use this properly you just double click it and when you scroll down it shows the inputs and you just switch an input to um, true if you want to use that input so if I had a base color and I was connected to it it gives me I can just connect it and normal or whatever but for now I just I just have my normal and my height active because that's the first two maps I tend to create when I'm creating the texture I do this because it gives me this little base color and doesn't give me that shiny metal that we usually start with um, before I start let me get something to drink and uh, <coughs> okay I'm um, so basically I'm going to start a texture off by um, you, there's multiple ways I think you can create this texture where uh, so, uh, some people might create a mask to get a shape and then you know um, go from there and try and tile it or whatever but I find it from what I see instead of seeing these stones as uh, as individual shapes I'm going to create it as cracks whereas the shapes the cracks will create their shape for me I'll explain as I go okay we are going to start the texture by creating a tile generator node <laughs> Okay, and uh, we are going to switch it from bricks to disk. With the disk selected, we are going to go back up to the scale. So you scale up a little. Oh, whoops. Um, actually, leave the scale at one for now and tweak scale variation instead. Let's keep it at 0.5. Scroll down to the luminance and let's actually let's manually do the luminance vibration. So um before we do the luminance actually let's do offset random and offset just a little bit. Okay. I'm using 0 0.7 and 0 0.36 if you want to follow my numbers directly, but I'll say tweak it until it feels right. Because we'll, we might come back and tweak again so this is like just to give a base before we start working on the next part and uh, I'm looking for the luminance variation oh there it is um just tweak the luminance variation to I'm going to tweak it to let's say 0.7 some um, 75 and then position random on X I'm going to move it a little bit so that they overlap a little not too much and let's put it back to zero and move it a little We'll, be, we'll come back and tweak all these stuff so it doesn't matter much and I'm going to increase the random mask just a little okay and I'm going to press space bar and type distance I'll be using some nodes by clicking up here if I do that I'll tell you guys I'm using this node so you can just press space bar and search for that node I'm going to connect the tile generator to both sides of the of the um, distance node and then change the distance node to only source and took it all the way up to two five something or well, like just to the maximum doesn't matter it, it actually caps like at, actually at i think a hundred or something but i, I just dragged all the way to, to the beginning and i can see some problems will arise basically we don't want these white circles in the middle of the the gradients it will create problems in the future so i'm just going to tweak this until those white circles are down 
one way I tweak their white set to make sure they are not there is by changing the scale a little bit. Okay, let's try and increase the scale instead. Nope. Okay, let's increase the scale and increase the scale vibration and see what that does. Okay, scale vibration to one works out. Okay, there we are. Actually, I like this. So point thirteen on the scale variation. I mean on the scale, and then point and one on the scale variation. Yeah, this actually gives me what I want. Um, now we'll use the most important. Well, one of the most important nodes over here, the edge detect. Boom. We got a crux. First, I'm going to the edge roundness. All the um all the way down to zero, and how you took your edge width will decide how much space is in between the um each brick. So just going to tweak it a little because um the size will increase a little when I go a little bit further. So let's say um two point five. And right now let me connect this to the normal map and see. What I get, yeah, I get what I want. I'm um, tweaking the normal math to three, just so that it comes out a little more. But uh, there's one issue, there's one major issue with this, and uh, which is, it looks like it's been cut by a machine, but whereas all the stones are straight, so we are we are going to make it warp a little with some nodes and uh, let the, let the games begin. So I'm gonna just press space bar and choose. Um, there's different ways we can do this, but before we go for it, let's use a blur. And the blur node can be found right here too. So let me tweak it down a little bit. Okay, let's zoom in a little. Okay, let's give it point one and one point five. Let's try one point five. Okay, the reason I use a blur is because um, in case you guys don't know, it gives it a rise instead of a sharp. Edge. So if let's say I connect it to a normal map right now, you see how it look at the difference now. If I were to connect the edge it detects instead of the blur, this will be the difference right now. Like this is what the edge detect gives me, but when I use blur, it gives me this rise in between. And it just gives you that nice variation that you want. And I'm going to disconnect it. Okay, I actually keep it connected so that you can see the updates as we go. Let's we'll move it back a little because we need more space. Oh, what's about to go down? Let's we'll select this line right here, and uh, let's start with uh, let's start with let's say slope blur. I'll try. Let's try warp first. So it's this is WRP, which is right here. Let's uh, connect a uh, cloud two. Obviously, the intensity is too high, so it's zero. I usually go to zero and start working from zero. So, okay, this gives me this right here. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to delete the warp. And put in a directional warp instead. Let's use a cloud. So, okay, there we go. Directional warp was better. Okay, I'm good to get intensity up to 20. Too much. Actually, let's. I'm going to move the blur up and connect the edge detect to the directional warp instead. The reason I did that was because it was giving me. I don't see the stone brick without the blur first, and I can connect the blur anytime. So that's uh, I don't like this shape I go over here, which means that my intensity is also a too high than I want it to, to be. Okay, let's move it a little bit more here. Let's change the angle to weird angle, that's random. We might have to add 
extra ones. Okay, um, I kind of like this shape, so I'm gonna connect the black box to it. Let's see the difference. I'm gonna add another blur, I mean, another warp to it. So let's add another directional warp. This time use the pedal noise zoom and see the difference. I'll use the panel noise. I'll, try, I'll use a zoom. You can't tweak your noises anytime, so it doesn't matter that much at first. And as you can see, when I connected the pedal noise, we didn't get that much difference. So, okay, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, I try like this shape, but. It's too much on some parts, so let's tweak it manually just a little bit. And I'm going to make the angle a little bit opposite so that it goes another way. And I'm, I'm going back to my edge detect and increase the edge width a little bit more. There we go. Okay, I actually like this, but. As you can see, we are getting some stones here I don't like. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's tweak this. Actually, let's. Okay, this one is on 12.13. So I'm going to put it to zero and see whether that removes those stones. It doesn't. So I'm going to put it back to around 12.13. So it's this one that is causing that problem. So I'm going to tweak this one to just a little bit down. Actually, that's not a problem. Actually, now I think about it. Yeah, I'll keep it like that. The problem actually from this is the distance. I mean the yeah the distance itself because I can see the shape back here in the corners. But it doesn't matter because it gives us that variation that we wanted. So basically we got our stones now. And it gives us this nice um stone looking star um well texture. All we have to tweak now is the the differences in the like the noise on top of the stone itself. So before I do that, let me add one more blur back here. Actually, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. This blur is on 1.5. I'm going to add a blur here. Make it 1.5. I'm going to delete this blur and see if the change affects. I can act obvious like I can't really see the change is affecting it. Okay, yeah, it does. So. I, yeah, it doesn't matter because I don't like having on SFU notes. I like to check and make sure. I put this blur in here just I can just so I, I get rid of those uh, uh, jaggedness I have over there. Try. Do I want to get rid of that? Try. Let's let's keep the blur here. I'll pull it down, and I'm going to connect this to the normal map manually. I'm going to select this line and add a slow blur instead. Slow blur grayscale, not the other one, because the other one just adds color. Let's connect a parallel noise to this one. Increase the samples to 32 and then reduce intensity to zero. And let's start working from there. Actually, let's make it min. And then let's work from here. Okay, oh, this one gives me this. Yeah. This gives me this shape, this blur right here. Okay, this little tweak I actually like, so I'm going to keep it here. And let's connect this one to the blur instead. I'll connect the blur to this. And uh, let's see the difference. Okay, this gives me. It might not be a drastic change, but it gives me a little bit more variation. I, I don't. I like it. We'll move this one back. Because now that we got. You could basically say we got a stone stone, but all we need now is the noises on top of everything. So let's see. I'm going to go back to the reference and see. The reference is hand painted, so it, I can make some changes myself. As if you look at the reference, you can see like some cracks on the on the, some of the stones. So I think we just need some cracks right here. Okay. So to create a cracks, I'm just going to um, first. Like I have to blend, obviously. So. But the question is, what do I blend it with? So let's look at the noises. I'm going to go through my library. Look at my noises and see which one I want. 
I don't want the cracks to show up everywhere. I just want it to show on the like on some parts. So hmm. I'm gonna try plasma. So let me see the distance. Um, this one gives me this um, effect right here. Let's add the levels to it. With a Oh, oops. I'm going to select the plasma node and press levels. I'm going to take the levels. I'm going to take the white gamma on the levels. Okay, the black actually. It's too sharp. Okay, ooh. Um, let's tweak the black on it as well. It doesn't matter much, that much because you don't see it for now. This is me assuming stuff, so um, let's try. If it works, it works. I'm going to press BLD, which means blend. Oops. Uh, put this right here. Put this right here. Let's see what it does. Let's switch it to subtract. Okay, this will subtract these to us. Let's connect this to them. This. Okay, this has a very see capacity down to zero. Let's tweak it up slowly. Okay, let's take from subtract to add sub. Um, right now this one is just is giving me a little bit of roughness on my stones instead of them, them being like perfectly smooth so like I'm getting it before I go to the cracks on the stones take the plastic down to zero take it up to one and see the difference okay you can see the, the drastic difference right there okay I'm gonna do this right now the reason we are getting a sharp um, transition right here is because we, I'm going to put a blur in in between right here so I don't get this sharp transition so I'm going to like blur to zero I'm going to tweak it up a little bit more um, let me tweak the levels reduce the try to reduce the black let me tweak this one too okay, let's put it on Add, I don't know, let me see what's the difference. Okay, add, add to the blocks and then, yeah, subtract, 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 from everything. So let's add sub again. Uh, I prefer subtract. Okay, let's try multiply. Okay, multiply kind of gives me what I want by bless out the edges too much. So I'll try subtract alone. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, I took the wrong bar. Let's take the plastic up to one again. And then let's take it down a little bit slowly. Okay, since I subtract, it's not doing that much. So um, let's bring out the back, the blacks up a little bit more. These are all minute stuff that don't matter that much to some people, but it just gives me that little um, variation on it. Let's check up the upper right of it. Yes, I can't try to see it. Um, okay, let's try one more thing. Let's reduce the distance on this one. Okay. Just, yeah, okay, that works. Yeah, some stuff I did, I actually put on 20 just because it's bugging me out as on 19. Um, let's tweak stuff like this is just like personal preferences like you could stop right here uh, after you get this crack right here but uh, i just i just need to pick a little so it doesn't matter actually let's see something let's see what happens if i connect this to this it should ruin it oh i did it okay let's see the difference if i just connect it okay actually i'm going to connect the blur to the opacity one because it gives it that little weird thing at the edges Um, okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to add the cracks on top. Maybe. Let me, th let me think if there's anything else I want to do before I add the cracks to it. Nah, I don't think so. So I'm going to add the cracks to it now. Okay, 
Okay, um, let's clean up a little. I'm going to select everything here, and I'm going to click on the this arrow here and click on this frame button where it frames everything. I'm just going to make this. I'm going to name it stones, so that because I've seen it getting messy now. So to add a cracks, I'm going to use a noise. So I, one noise I like using when adding cracks to surfaces would be the crystals so i'm just going to start crystal and then it should be crystal one crystal one just gives you these hard edges right here when you're adding it but before i go there let's trick let's see if i can tweak something to change um what intensity try before i do that let me connect the crystal one to the normal map so i, I see the amount of cracks i'm getting let's try this out Okay, so I'm just gonna try um try to tweak the warp intensity and then Okay there we go. Um, I wanted to warp a little bit more because it's obviously the cracks. So um let's see what happens if I inverse it invert it I mean um if I invert the colors I get this this right here. And then I'll trace up to this uh, so that it curves more of this color. Okay, that can work with this. Okay, uh, I'm going to pull this one back into there. Add a blend. Basically, I just took the crystal one, used the took the warp and the disorder, and then added the levels and reverted the move the black to the white and the white to the black so that it inverts the colors instead of having to use an invert node. And I'm going to put this in the foreground and put this in the background. See, I work over here. And I'm going to tweak it to this. This one I might have to work with a different um different modes to check so I'm firstly I'll try that linear burn I mean the linear dodge put it to zero it gives me this because there's a lot of white in it as well so I'll try um, subtract instead this actually kind of gives me the colors I want but the issue is that the cracks are showing but they are very light right now so that might be because let's make this one into more black and see what happens. No, that doesn't do much, it just increases the black footprint. So let's um let's connect this to the normal map and see what we are doing. Instead of zooming. Uh, I try kind of don't like the cracks I'm getting right now, so I'm gonna have to use a different noise. Um Okay, let's hold up. Let's try something first. I might keep this noise on it just to give it that little, just to keep the bumps on it. But before I do that, let me put a blur because it's very harsh right now. Let me invert the colors again. See what I can do with it with that instead. Down zero, see the difference? Okay, this one is. Um, let's put the uh, warp intensity to zero on here and this other to zero. It gives me this right here. Let's tweak this to add. Okay, there we go. It gives me the cracks. It's actually gives me the cracks, but um, problems obviously. Thick. Okay, yeah, there we go. We get we're getting the cracks, but some of the blacks from the other one is blending in 
making it remove the spaces we have in between okay so let's double check again WAP is zero this other is zero this is my levels which still need some tweaking so doesn't that much matter that much because and uh, I'm using a blur to add a little bit um, variation to the blacks and whites so it's not just black and white and has some grace in there and then I'm using a add linear dodge that this gives me the cracks I want but the problem is the fact that the cracks right now are still very harsh I shall and I want them to be so I'm going to double click on this and click once on the blur and see if I if when I take the blur but I change the harshness seems not to now the reason is doing that because um over here when we when we are tweaking this one when we pull past all the way up it gives us hard edges and when we put it past all the way down it gives us the shape underneath because we have so let's try putting this one on the foreground and the crystals on for and background and see the difference so i went we put it faster way up we get this instead but then we still have some rocks blending now so actually let, let me revert it back to the old formation where crystals is on foreground and the stone sound the background and if you hear something going off right now that might be the fan on my laptop because i'm not using my desktop right now so um i need to get and sit down or i'm in the past down I'm going to keep it like this. Even though it's not um, as much cracks out as I want it to be, I'll keep it like that. Yep. Now let's add some. Let's add something very little, and this might not be a big change. So I'm going to ch type in that one, or actually just that. Uh, let's try that one. Um, put in a blend. Put this in the foreground. Put this in the background. Let's add sub. Connect this to the normal map. Tweak it down to zero. Put a little bit. From zero, not so much. Let's try point zero one. This gives me this little texture right here. Like it gives a rock, and I mean the stones a little bit roughness. Um, let's try point zero two. It seems like it's very sensitive actually, which is weird. But point zero two. Let me zoom out a little bit more. So yeah, it just makes it catch the light differently. Instead of it being a smooth surface, yeah, I like what we've gotten so far, and I like the fact that we are not very messy right now. But because most of the texture is on the stones, um, let's see, let's see, look at the cracks, For the cracks. Let me increase. Let me see if I can change the levels. Make it the blocks a little bit more. If I make the blocks too much, okay, that, okay, that, that's what I get. That's a problem. Okay, let's put a white a little bit more so that it just tightens the black part a little bit. And then let me add a more gray. Let me reduce the white a little bit so it's not so prominent. So it turns more gray instead of black and white. Let's take it back up a little. We might use this as a mask for colors. So yeah, yeah. I might, I might blend the crystals and something else. Actually, let's, um, we might use this one for the base color. So let's check. We'll check it later. Um, let's. One more thing I, I'll do is go back to my normal map. Double click and type in 10. Okay, now that 
nice then I see some stuff I want to change a little. Um, let's change, let's say, da, 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 this blur. Let's make a, oh wait, that's not a blur, whoops. Wait, that was a blur, right? Yeah, that's a blur. Let's put it on one. Um, there's another blur I might have to change, I might want to change this one. Let's take it up a little bit. Um, let's see if we can be stubborn and add one more blur at the end. Check it down to zero and work from zero. Let's put it on zero again. Let's put it. Nah, I don't like this blur. I'm going to delete this blur and then uh, let's go back to this, these ones. There's a blur right here. Okay, I'm going to take this one from to 10. And then I'm going to reduce it back to zero and see how it can work. Because I don't want the hash edges. Now we're getting. Okay, nice. I want, I want it to be able to be rounded. Yeah, that's all. That's the reason I'm sticking the blur. So yeah. Um, one thing I also don't like is okay. I'm going to connect this right here to the blend that has the depth on it, so that it removes some of the depth from some places. And actually, now I think about it, because I tweak the blur too much, it's actually making the cracks. I am hit it very hard. So let's. See if maybe if I can tweak this cracks blend blur a little bit more. You see this one's not doing that much, so it doesn't matter that much on this one. But it's, it's actually reducing the cracks a little bit. But let's reduce this blur back again, because sometimes I have to sacrifice something. So because when I move it up and up too much, I lose a lot of detail, and I don't want that. I want, I want to show that the stones are different. I mean, are separate. So let's keep it back at, um, around point three. And as you can see, the dirt seems to be stopping at a point right here. It's not sh like going everywhere. But we can fix that by adding the levels. So, let's see what, what happens when I delete this node. Oh, actually, yeah. Oh, actually, I remember now. Because when I put this in here, it changed the opacity. So that's why that part is smooth. The black part will, be smooth, will not get affected. I was, I should, I'll keep it like this because um, I want it to be everywhere. So basically, I'll say we are done with the rocks. I have some cracks on here. You can change, you can increase your cracks by, you know, just creating more and then add more texture to it. But I'm going to keep it like this. I like the texture I have so far. Now, uh, before I go any further, let me pull some stuff back. Zoom into the normal map, pull it back a little bit more. Oh, and in case you don't have an ambient occlusion, which start for some reason, Actually, understandably, it doesn't come with the default PBR, so just add an ambient. I'll show you guys. Press space bar, type output, or you can just click the output node under this thing. And uh, you change, you click on your output node, add, click on the plus button by the add item, change it to the ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion. And I copy and paste the name here, like copy this name right here and put it. And the identifier up here and then put it in the label too but when you put it in the label switch the first letter to a capital it's, you don't have to do it but it just changes the label so that the label is not the same as the identifier and change the group to material make sure the group name is the same as the other group names on the other um, outputs so i can connect an ambient occlusion i already have an ambient occlusion here because i have it as a custom um, substance every time i create new substance it opens with it <coughs> And yeah, so this basically is what I'm talking about. Identify is ambient occlusion, label is ambient occlusion, but with a capital A, but that's my own personal programs. And group is material, and everything else is the same. Um, reason I, ambient occlusion just helps give shadows to some parts. It's basically when something makes contact with another thing, there's no light getting there, so that's what shows that stuff are making contact. If you actually take an image and remove the shadow from the 
floor like the contact part it make it look like the person is floating or something so with that ambient occlusion you can break a lot of immersion and stuff so um for some textures you don't need ambient occlusion that much for this one we, i might not need it that much but um let's let's see so i'm going to um type in um i usually use curvature smooth or normal to height but for this one let's use the curvature smooth smooth um whoops okay and um, connect my normal back to the normal because because i put it there it connected it so i'm, con I'm connecting my normal back to my normal okay there we go and i'm going to type in ambient put in the ambient occlusion node this gives me this um pull this one back a little so we have some space scroll down actually I'm, i just realized i'm not be saving make sure you save a lot guys don't leave the dent don't be that guy who lost all his work because he didn't save um gonna tweak the height depth information a little bit more actually that's too much my thing on so okay let's connect it before doing anything trust it i'm going to double click on my pbr and make the ambient occlusion true which if you do that it will turn everything black because there's no ambient occlusion for it to read so it counts everything as basically a shadow or something so it turns it black but when i connect the ambient occlusion i get this and you see the difference now but obviously it's too much because it's even giving my uh, my dirt an ambient occlusion that's why you see those dots turn black so i can just tweak the height information down a little bit more and if you don't want your dirt to have ambient occlusion like mine does you can connect this one instead of the normal map because when you connect this instead of the normal actually this one also has a dirt on it so but it may, this one has more um, less of a variation in between so you get this one and then it turns into the ambient occlusion but let's see what happens when i disconnect the ambient occlusion oh well it turns like that if i make the ambient occlusion false and if i make the ambient occlusion if i connect this to an ambient occlusion you see the difference it gives me that little shadow right there so basically like that little shadow it, you might not want it but i like it because it, it just adds a little bit to the realism so oops um it's too false make it true and then connect it to it i'm um, going to connect this to my height map so in case somebody needs to tweak it outside Actually, I'm going to make it, I'm going to do a normal to height instead. So let's do normal to height. Whoops, I, I really need to stop doing that. Um, when you click it, it will it's not still connect and it will break the connection for you. So I'm just going to type it outside with nothing selected. And then, boom. Let me move some stuff down. I try to move it up, I try and then move this one down. Now the reason this is uh it has this gradient input right here is because there were, we didn't have a gradient transition so substance was not clip with the gradient transition. Let's see if there's a character smooth gradient. It seems actually it seems there uh, is it the character transmit transition. Yeah, it's that's the same one, yeah. There's no gradient version of it. Like uh, it doesn't matter this node is just if you press d it literally just takes the thing and makes a, a gradient map and then puts it into the distance so d docks your nodes like that and you can dock some nodes if you feel like they are not useful like the blur i can dock it right here but or you can't dock stuff that connected to two things that's why so like this blur if i press d it's a dock over here it just makes your scene look a little bit cleaner but i don't dock it because uh, if you dock sometimes some people don't and you're showing it to another person they might not they might not see it oh and uh but whatever okay now let's get to the roughness i'm going to usually i add base color at this time but i, I prefer to make base color last so i'm going to do a roughness now um with a roughness i can use so let me make the roughness true over here first with roughness i can use the curvature smooth as my roughness actually 
uh, it just makes it less glossy at some point but using a curvature smooth the problem is the fact that a curvature smooth is for curves so it looks at the transitions and this is actually not bad but um nah i'm just gonna connect this connector um let's see what happens if i use my ambient occlusion my ambient occlusion has a lot of whites and white just means it doesn't reflect light that much and black is where it reflects a lot of light so i'm going to use ambient occlusion and i then tweak select the bar that is connected to the roughness and add the levels to it you can use you can also use the normal to hide to create your not your roughness if you want but before I do everything else, let me move everything back again. Get some space. There's no point in compressing my stuff back there. Um, let's put this one here. Just making sure people can see. Okay. And uh, as you can see, we have no glossiness on this. So if I make it black, everything will turn super shiny. I, I, obviously, you guys can see that how shiny it is. But if I tweak it back to the default, it just removes everything from shininess. So, uh, from being shiny, I mean, just going to move this one up here and add a little black to it because some things uh, like have some a little bit glossiness to them. Actually, I'm going to invert the colors now that I think about it. So that the glossy parts are the stones that are sticking out and the part, the pla and the concrete or whatever is in between is the non-glossy part. But obviously, I don't want it to be this glossy. So if I make it everything black, basically, everything gets glossy. So I just have to get black now to make them a little bit more gray. So that not it's not super glossy. So let's see. Took this one here, and I just want them to catch light a little bit more, but not so much that they look like they are wet. Now this is going darker. So let's go lighter. Let's come down so just like uh, yeah, it's good to have a gray roughness map in my opinion instead of having a black and white. Like the map that I prefer to be black and white is the <coughs> yeah height map, but black and white height map is not even that much that good in my opinion also. But um the metal map is where black and white matters because when um, black just means it's not metal, white means it's metal so and our metal map here is going to be black because you know we are not using a metal. But okay, we got it rocks now. Now you can leave it over here and then we are good. We got the texture. We got I think we got close enough to the texture we wanted. Like the only thing that is different is the sizes of the rocks. But that's not a big deal for me because if I apply the texture I can change the scale of the UVs or whatever to get the bigger sizes. But as you can see we have enough variation in here. And the only thing that I kind of don't like is the fact that we have this sharp edge over here. But I believe it will just help it out a little bit more. And uh, it's time to add a diffuse color. I mean, the base color. So I'm going to switch the base color to true on this one. And it turns everything black. So we, um, let me pull this one back a little bit more. There we go. Okay, for the base color, I'm going to add a greenish mark. I'm going to push, uh, firstly I'm going to put this one into the gradient output, the input I mean, and um, hmm. actually, let me, let me try it for you guys, so that. Let's, I'm going to bring a bitmap in here, let's say you had an image from Google, right, and uh, push. I have a lot of images, so I can't have to remember where I put them, let's see the next part. <coughs> Okay, I don't know. Wow, I really need to organize my references. Uh, where is it? No, textures. Uh, there's textures, I'm sorry. There's a random, some random textures I have. So, okay, uh, let's use this one instead. Link resource. I link the resource because I'm not going to be needing it. So that it doesn't save with the image. Okay, so something like this, right? Let's say I wanted to use this as my base color. So when I go to gradient map, some people will know this already, but in case for other people don't know. And I'm gonna click once on this one so that it doesn't I'm gonna click once on the gradient map so that it doesn't change the 2D view. 
and I go to fake gradients. I can drag from here and then drag here and it creates the gradients for me. And basically it gives me this in my gradient map. Obviously I don't like that. Because, um, the more nodes you have, the more um, you get these weird liquid looking stuff. So you gotta be careful um, how far you drag out. So I, I like to drag from the light around to the darker one. So yes, this small drag will do for me. Uh, let's see what we get. Um, let's connect to this instead. Okay. Can I get to the base color? And get this color map instead. All right, so I'm not going to be using this color. But I'm just showing you guys how you can use different colors. But now that we got this, let's say we got this right. But we want the the plus time between to be different color. We can just add another gradient map and use this one as the mask again. Actually, I'll use this one instead as the mask because it has the more blacks in it. We can add the levels just so that it's more black and white. And uh, let's say I took this color to a drastic color. I'm going to want to put a color in here. Let me delete this node right. I'm going to want to put a color just so that you guys see the difference. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a red. But before I put an invert node in between here, so that the color goes to the white parts and the color doesn't go to the black part. So if I put an invert, it will invert the color instead to add it this way instead, where the bricks will not be affected by the thing in between of you and uh when i add a blend over here and i put this in the four and the, this one in the background you get this information but just because some copy and um, let's try multiply nope um, oh actually i know why let's put on copy again and then put this one as opacity okay let's put this one as opacity instead of Okay, this gives me, this gives me, yeah, there we go. When you put this one as opacity, it makes the white to be the foreground and the black to be the background. So basically it shows it like this. And you can take opacity to make which one shows more and which one doesn't show more. So trick it like this and then you can, I leave that node on copy right And I, if I drag this to the base color, this side to look basically. Obviously this one we want. It looks kind of cool, but. <laughs> That's not what we want. And so yeah, so if I to put the opacity on one to make the reds really red, and then this the foreground will be the black part. So you just gotta think of it like this. Even you use an opacity map, black is background and white is foreground. So it will be using this as a mask to help you with your I don't know for colors where you want them to be and where you don't want them to be. Actually, one thing I can also do is uh, blend again. So let's try this. Just in case you guys want to do this, this this part of me is just me showing you guys some stuff. So I'm going to blend again, right, and use this as the opacity again. So remembering the information, white is foreground, so I want the red to be the foreground, and I want no, it's in black because there's no color in there. Don't worry. Wow, this actually, wow, this actually looks cool. But there's no way I'm doing so. <laughs> Makes it look like the lava this one I created. Um, okay. Um, more, that's why it being the foreground and then actually no. Oh yeah, why being the foreground and let's add another gradient map. And let's say this gradient map was black, like we just leave it at. Actually, we we'll, we we'll change the color, but we we'll add the crystals to it because remember the crystals are the cracks that we used. So let's connect the crystals to it. And we need the black parts of the crystals to be the color. So. We'll change the black on this one to let's say red. Oh, actually, no, let's try a different color so that it's more prominent blue. And uh, we'll put this in the background. Uh, this will change the colors of the what's his name? Try to know. Yeah, there we go. And then we can just tweak this down make the blue show more or the black the red show more but it seems that the blues have taken the this thing the cracks are still have a different color now but then they're overtaking it 
So I think that the way I would have to do this instead is that let's try using a different mask. So let's try using this as the mask. Because the reason it's doing this is because um ah, it's because well I think yeah I know why it's doing that. So let's put an invert node. I right now I know I'm getting I'm messing my stuff about our uh, command Z, that's why I don't care that much. One invert, okay. The reason it's doing this is because the cracks in the on the texture itself are grey, they're not black or white. So it's it's making it harder for you to read. That's why it's doing this weird color variation over here. So I think the way I would have to do that with command Z a lot. Because this is all just color testing right here. The base color part is like the fun part. Because you can just keep on messing around with different colors and seeing what you get. Especially if you're not like matching a reference or something. Okay, let me keep. I'm do these ones right here. Because we don't need it. Oh, whoops. Kind of deleted the blender read. There we go. Um, okay. Yeah, we, uh, I don't have to change the color of my cracks basically, but because I was thinking about making the cracks a different color and then making them darker, but it doesn't matter that much because we need the cracks to be on there and show that they are cracks. But if anything, I'll tweak. If I want the cracks to be anything, sure. But I've had to tweak the ambient occlusion to make it a little bit higher so that the cracks show more. So if I tweak the ambient occlusion, you can see the cracks more. But when I do that, because of the difference between uh cracks and this thing being not that big, it make the in order to get out thing to show to make everything look like this where there's too much ambient occlusion casting too much shadow on those stuff so if like i were to tweak my light around you don't see that light moving around that much because like I, I press shift command and right click to move my lights right actually you see it but everything still looks very dark because there's a lot of ambient occlusion so yeah let's go and tweak my ambient occlusion back down a little bit more I'm going to change the colors again. Um, so basically, I'll say this is the end of the video here. Because the colors, if I've got everything I wanted. And even if, actually sometimes, what, people, some, what some people will do is that uh, they will like put color co codes. So that when they give the texture to somebody else, the person knows that, oh, this is this color to change, this is this color to change. But it doesn't matter that much. Because I, I wanted to actually match. So I'll, I'll just have to tweak the reds here. To, let's say, a dark gray. But I add a little green to it because I don't like stuff being just grayish, so I'm just gonna add a little green to it and tweak the black to a yellowish, I guess. Let's make this one a dark green. Try to reflip the reflip the colors actually. So I'm gonna just whoops. I'm gonna drag this here. This just gives it this color right here. But I'm going to care a little bit more. And usually people don't like to manually do their gradient picker, but I don't mind doing it myself, especially when I'm going for a color that I have in mind. Let's see if I put this one on black. Okay, let's put the darkest part to this one. Let's put the so let's make the darkest part very dark. Let's make the lighter part not too far from it. So that everything still looks dark. And we get this nice transition. But it finds that the opacity, yep, the opacity is not high enough to make it show. This just gives me this nice thing right here. But now it looks too dirty, so I'm just going to move it down a little bit more. And let's see. Um, yeah, this is very black and whitey, so I don't like it. So I'm going to move it a little bit to the side here. That's, oh, and I was, it's funny that I was, I was kind of right that it, had, it was greenish. Because I like there's greens in a lot of stuff. Like when I think about it. I try. Can I come on Z? Yep, I can't. Because I, I kind of don't like what I did. But um, basically, I could say this is the end of the video right here. We got our rocky texture. We can apply it to any material we want. And we can use it for a material blend if need be. The only things I'll change right here will be some no, some stuff because it seems hey, I, I manually dug in some gradient stuff but it doesn't matter we got some clean stuff and I'll delete my link my bitmap because I don't need it 
and I'm going to just clean up a little by creating frames so that people anybody who gets this texture can like see properly and usually before you save out the texture some people like to do this where they change everything to relative to parents so that every time you tweak the uh, size over here it changes the size for everything so yeah don't worry I, I just took it back down to zero um <coughs> and also they expose some um they expose some of the nodes so that somebody else can change some stuff like they can expose some roughness nodes on one of the stuff so that i can change the how rough i want it to be if i were the one using the texture if let's say this texture was created by somebody else and i downloaded it and wanted to took it but i'm creating this texture for myself and i don't think that i'm good enough to share my textures with other people yet so yeah basically that's how i create i'll create this texture this was actually a fun video because I went in without like a great idea of what I wanted to, how I was going to, how I was going to do this. I just, I, was, I just thought about it and I decided to do it. And it actually came out nice. Granted, there are some stuff I could have made different with, like the cracks that are on the rocks. I, I wish they were more prominent. Maybe there are better, there are better ways of doing them, and I would just have to go and look at it. I'll just have to keep on practicing. So yeah. I like Substance Designer so far, so I'm just gonna clean up now. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Oh, okay. Um, this is me <laughs> recording something because I just remembered it while editing out the other one. Um, in case, let's say you wanted to increase the size of your bricks before exporting out, you can uh, add a 2D transform node in between here. So let's say I select, actually, actually better to add it here. You can add it right here and press transform 2D. I type in transform today and you can m increase the size by times two where I should you to increase your size of your of your um, stones and uh, if you press if you divide it by two we divide the sizes by two so we'll keep on reducing like this yeah so this is for if like you want to export it out in a different way so yeah but don't go too far with it well, you can if you want, but it might ruin it at some point. So, but I just wanted to add this part in case somebody wanted to increase the size of their um, this time, their stones. I'm going to keep it on the default one so that I get more variation. So yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>